Hello, my cookies. Welcome. Welcome to Russell Cooks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, I am going to be doing a loaded baked potato soup. Now I put baked in parentheses because obviously we aren't going to bake it. We're making a soup here. I love this soup. Let's get started. First things first, let's gather our ingredients. You are going to need some flour, some bacon. You're going to need an onion. This was a very large onion, so I'm using half here. You need sour cream, heavy cream. You're going to need cheese between four and eight ounces depending how rich you want to make it and you're going to need some chicken stock chicken broth you can absolutely use veg stock here if you want to keep it vegetarian scallions three pounds russet potatoes garlic and dried or fresh thyme if you use fresh increase the amount by three to four times. I am also going to be using a little bit of Bell's poultry seasoning. I love this stuff. It's got thyme in it. It's also got a little bit of sage. It is completely optional. I like using it in place of thyme. First things first, we got to get our bacon going. This is a one pot dish. We're going to do everything in one pot. So that means we stagger the cooking. So for the bacon here, I'm using about eight ounces of bacon. It'll help things cook a little bit quicker and it'll already be cut up. So when I sprinkle it on top, it'll be a perfect garnish. This is a pound, so I'm gonna be using about half of this. I'm just gonna cut this up into little pieces here. I like cutting lengthwise here and then slicing it thin this way. I'm gonna start my bacon in a cold pot. I'm gonna put it over medium heat. And actually a little trick here when I'm cooking bacon in a pan, I put in a couple of tablespoons of water. It helps render the fat and then the water cooks off and then you have enough fat to crisp up the bacon without burning. So I am gonna add a tablespoon of water. I'm gonna start on medium high heat and then I'm gonna drop it down to medium. This is gonna take about eight minutes. I'm gonna stir it occasionally. While that's going, I'm gonna prep the rest of my ingredients. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel my potatoes. I am gonna save some of the peels. And I'm gonna crisp them up in a little bit of this bacon fat so we get nice little crispy skin peels to put on top of our soup. When I cut up the potatoes, I'm gonna cut them up between half and three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna put them in water and then drain them before they go into the soup. So I am gonna save a whole bunch of peels here. You don't need to save all of them. All right, I think that's enough. I'm gonna set these aside over here. I'm gonna finish peeling. I'm gonna reduce my heat down to medium. We have our potatoes. I'm gonna cut these up about half inch, three quarter inch pieces. We got our potatoes done, our bacon's just about finishing. While we're waiting for the bacon to finish, I am gonna cut up my onion. So you want one onion, if you have a very large onion, just use half. I'm gonna chop this onion. Remember, everything here is gonna get pureed. If you wanna leave it a little chunky, you can. I probably will. Also, if you wanna use something like a leek here, absolutely, my store was out of leeks at the time. So I'm using an onion. Bacon seems done. I'm using a spider. You can use a slotted spoon, get your bacon out. Yeah, look how crispy that is. Get my potato skins in here. Start crisping them up. Medium heat, medium low, depending. Now, while those are frying, this is gonna take between five and eight minutes. Keep an eye on it. I love this because I normally don't eat the potato skins. Normally throw them all away, but this way you utilize a little bit more. Get a nice crispy garnish, why not? So while those are frying up, I'm gonna do some cheese now. I love cheese. So I'm gonna be using about eight ounces. You absolutely can use less. Four to eight ounces here, two to four cups of shredded cheese. Don't buy pre-shredded, it's covered in cornstarch and all this other stuff. Shred it yourself. I'm using extra sharp white cheddar. I like it because it's got a ton of flavor. All right, my oil is smoking a little bit, my bacon fat, so I've turned the heat down a little bit. I don't want anything burning, but you can see we're crisping these up very nicely. So I'm gonna be using about three cloves of garlic here. Not even gonna bother mincing it. I'm gonna throw it in whole. My skins are finishing up. Let's get them out. I'm gonna put them with the bacon. Just gonna sprinkle the skins with a little bit of salt, onion, it's going in. It's time for the onion. It's going into that fat left in the pot. I'm gonna cook it for about five minutes. You want it soft into medium, medium low heat. Keep an eye on it. And get these whole garlic cloves in there. Remember, we're gonna puree this up. I'm gonna be using about four cups of chicken stock, chicken broth. I like bone broth. Chicken stock, homemade stuff, fantastic. For my heavy cream, I might hold back a little bit on the heavy cream and increase the amount of cheese that I put in. I might go half a cup on the heavy cream, which is exactly what's in here. 
Onions have about two more minutes. I'm gonna throw my whole garlic cloves in. I'm gonna be using about two tablespoons of flour here, and I'm gonna add at the same time as my Bell's poultry seasoning. Probably should only use about half a teaspoon of this Bell's. I've got my heat down medium low, adding my flour and half a teaspoon of Bell's, two tablespoons of flour. I'm just gonna cook this until it's fragrant. It's gonna be about 30 seconds, but I also want the flour fully cooked. That might take upwards of a minute. Next up is our broth, four cups broth. I'm using about a half cup of heavy cream. You can absolutely go up to a cup if you want a little bit more body, a little more richness. Scraping up any brown stuff on the bottom. I got a dark bottom pot. It's hard to see. You can feel it though. Don't forget to do this. Otherwise it'll stick there and burn. All right, it is time for our potatoes. I am going to drain them and get them in the pot. Give them a good stir, bring it up to a boil or simmer. We're gonna cover, reduce heat. We're gonna cook for about seven minutes until the potatoes are tender throughout. While we're waiting, let's get to more of our scallion garnish here. I like scallions, you can use chives here. Chives are fantastic. Scallions are a little bit more bang for your buck, I think, in terms of flavor. We got a simmer. I'm gonna drop the heat to medium low or low, depending on your burner. Cover it with my Darth Vader. So now we wait, should take six to 10 minutes, depending on how big you cut your potatoes. Half inch, probably closer to six. Three quarters of an inch, probably closer to 10. Let's see how close we are. I think we're a couple minutes out. Ooh, right there. I think we're good here. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got here. All right, I am gonna put some in a separate bowl here. That is wicked hot. So again, if you wanted to keep this chunky, you absolutely could. You don't have to puree all the potatoes. What I would do is I would use my spider or slotted spoon, scoop out a couple cups of the chunky potatoes, and then puree the rest of the soup. All right, let's get pureeing. Be careful when you puree. You don't want this lid popping off and exploding hot boiling liquid all over you. Yes, it has happened. No, it is not pleasant. Here we go. If it looks a little brown, don't fret. Remember, we're gonna be stirring that white cheddar in. That'll brighten things up. And put a little sour cream in as well. That'll brighten things up. If you add more heavy cream, that'll brighten things up. Don't overdo it. Get it to smooth and get it out. You don't want it being gluey. Now these are russets, so it won't be as gluey if you use the waxy potato, but it still can turn gluey. Oh yes, look at that. All right, it's time for the cheese. I'm gonna whisk in the cheese. I'm gonna save a little bit to put on top. Let's give this a taste. If you noticed, I didn't really add a lot of salt because we used bacon fat. I used chicken stock. I just put in a whole bunch of cheddar cheese, which is salty. So potatoes take a lot of salt. I'm probably gonna have to add some, but I'm doing it at the end here. All right, let's give this a taste. Absolutely needs a little salt, that's okay. It's a lot easier to add salt to stuff than it is to take it out. I'm gonna add probably half a teaspoon of kosher salt and season as you go. Season and taste, rather. Don't over salt it. Half a teaspoon, then another quarter if it needs more. Cool thing about salt is it makes things taste more like themselves until you've had too much, and then it just tastes like salt. All right, here we go. It's my favorite part. Let's do a dollop of sour cream right here. A dollop, no Michelin stars. You can do a canal if you want. Don't sink. Get our bacon bits. Get our fried crispy potato skins. Give our dish a little bit of height here. A little bit extra cheese. And let's not forget our scallions here. Let's dig in here and get a little bit of bacon, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of sour cream. You see how it's not stringy? Now, if you put in something like uh, mozzarella or whatnot, I'd have stringy cheese. This was an older, sharper cheddar. It dissolved perfectly in there. Oh my goodness. This is fantastic. The base tastes like a baked potato. Remember, we didn't bake these potatoes, we boiled them, but we still have that exact flavor. The crispy bacon. Just adds so much oomph, a little bit of salt, it's nice. Sour cream comes in and smooths everything. And then the crispy potato skins, don't omit these. These really add to that baked potato flavor. The cheese, so much richness. It doesn't take it over the potato. The potato is the focus. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. I also have Instagram and TikTok. 
drop me a follow. The links are below. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Take care.